My name is Rabbi David Hill. I was born in a small town in Latvia called Libau in 1921. My family came to this country in 1930 and we were almost the last that America allowed to come in because the immigration policy in the 30s was against anyone coming here. So we were lucky that we came and also with God's help we missed the Holocaust. I attended Yeshivot in New York and uh, then I ended up at Yeshiva University going for smicha during the Second World War. My family was always in the meat business and we had a bet called 999 and we sent uh, a lot of salamis to Jewish soldiers in the army in the Second World War like we did in the Gulf War. And this was a family tradition. When I became president of the Young Israel Movement, the National Council of Young Israel in 1961, we were celebrating our 50th anniversary. And we wanted to give President Kennedy a matana, a gift. So we called up and his Jewish advisor was a man by the name of Mike Feldman. And he said to me, which organization did you belong to? I said, Young Israel. Oh, he says, they sent me a kosher salami when I was in the army. He says, tell me what you want from the president and I'll make sure you get it. So, the, the first approach that I personally had uh, on behalf of myself and the Young Israel Movement was entree to the White House. And this was an Inyan of Hakoratov. We came to Washington, we flew in by plane on our anniversary and we presented gifts to the people in, in Washington. And that has been uh, the way many Jewish organizations in this country said thank you to the American people who were elected as, as their officials and their representatives. In the history of the world, if one were to study it, they would find that our country, America, is the only one that from its very beginning stated that there's freedom of religion, freedom of speech, the protection of the minorities, and that has never changed. Yes, there's anti-Semitism wherever you go, but the policy of this country and if something goes wrong, it is the court system, the judicial system, that backs up our Constitution to show how uh, honest we are in dealing with minorities. So if ever there was a country, and we Jews have been all over the world, would like to say thank you that it is the Jews of America that uh, owe that thank you to the Constitution, to the framers, to George Washington. Interesting, the first letter to the Jewish people by George Washington to the Turo Synagogue showed how friendly he is and that he would protect our religion. And <clears throat> he wasn't the only one. All presidents followed. When it came to problems 
that Jews faced in other countries. I'll give you an example. Uh, the riots in Kishinev in 1905. It was Teddy Roosevelt that warned the Russians, don't you dare do that again. There are very few leaders in countries that went out of their way. We have a continuous history of being for minorities, being for the underdog, and, and that's something that the Jewish person should appreciate. In World War II, you had over half a million Jewish soldiers that served in the American army. And it was partly due to the American army that went into Buchenwald and free Jews, etc. So we, we can judge that the American people, when they try to elect someone for office, don't look to see who they are. They want to see what type of person they are. Do they have a good history? And we have about five, five and a half million Jews in this country. But of the nine Supreme Court justices, three are Jews. That's a good percentage. Senators, 11 or 12. Congressmen, etc. And this goes almost I'll give you the best example. When I started the work to free Jews in Russia in 1960, we came across, we had to build a structure. And it was Golda Meir who helped me with Israelis, with Misrad Achutz, etc. But there was a senator, Scoop Jackson, from the state of Washington. He had a Jewish advisor in his office by the name of Richard Pearl. And Richard introduced us to Scoop Jackson. And the first and only law that was passed on human rights as American policy was the Jackson Vatican Amendment to uh, free Jews in Russia. I had this chut, the good fortune, of meeting with Scoop Jackson in Washington, and the debate had taken place. We had Senator Javits of New York, Senator Ribikoff of Connecticut, and Scoop Jackson. The two Jewish ones were afraid to start up with Russia. Scoop Jackson says, I'll tell you why I'm for giving Russia a hard time. He says, I was a captain in the American Army. And I was there on that first visit to Buchenwald. So he says, as a Gentile, and as someone believes in the rights of freedom, etc., I owe the Jewish people a debt. And this is what I'm doing. Now, this was an American senator who went out of his way. And I want to tell you, Every time we from the Soviet Jewry movement went to Washington, for whatever reason, and I myself met six presidents on this particular issue, we always stopped by Jackson and he would tell us, say this, don't say this. And he was one of the Hasidic Umar Sa'olam. So if there's one message that I would give to our people, and that is to believe in the Torah, to believe in our Nevi'im, who 2,000 years ago said there will come a time where they will shuva banim ligvulam. And we are seeing only the beginning of that. There's so much more that the next generations will see in the emet, in the truthfulness of our Torah, of our Gedolim. And, and the sad part is that assimilation, 
See, when you have freedom, it's good. But then again, it's bad. The amount of percentage of Jewish children getting a Torah education is very low. And, and we are losing people. So, as an example, birthright is picking on young people who had no Jewish background, bringing them to Israel for 10 days, and after that, many of them turn around and, and, and realize the capacity that they have with the history of their people. So, young Jews read history, become acquainted with our great leaders, become acquainted with our philosophy. We are a people that are givers and not takers. In every country that we ever lived in, we gave. Einstein helped the atomic bomb become a reality. I mean, he can go on and on and on. So, it is incumbent, very important, for the Jewish leadership of this country to make sure Jewish education is for all, to use the entire concept of Hakor HaTov to the American people of the leadership. Always make sure that those that you elect are those that are friendly to you. And in the history of, of countries, we are the only ones, and we're, as an American people, are young. What's 300 years? I mean, in comparison uh, to France, to India, to China, uh, to Russia, etc. And yet, we have a record that is perfect when it comes to protect minorities. And every president that we ever had was someone that fought and won.